Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host AMF1534 here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Safe Cracker. And last time we knocked out the snooker puzzle here in the other room, went downstairs to the fountain, did the puzzle there, came back upstairs again, unlocked the violet bedroom where we did a couple things in there, and then we finished off the day with the Call Sarah safe. Better call Saul, better call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually need to catch up on that. I am one episode behind now, and that is not good. So, we're getting distracted. In the midst of doing that, we got some new items. We got this lever, which we will be using today. We got this screen and key card reader, which goes to this little bugger right over here. Not going to do that one today, though. Uh, that doesn't really hold any particular relevance in what we're doing immediately right now. So, we'll take care of that next episode. And then, uh, we got the steering wheel, which we'll also be putting to use, well, right now, actually. So... Yes. Uh, we're getting really close to the end, guys. Like, we're, there's there's only a little bit left. We're not going to knock it out in this episode, but in the next one, that's where we're going to uncover who is going to be inheriting the massive piles of money that Mr. Adams has in this house. So, and we're so close, we can almost taste it. Slurpity slurp. Here we go. So we got a lot of things to do today. And being in this massive, lavish mansion, it reminds me, I went and saw The Kingsman last night. And if you guys are on the fence about watching that movie, totally go see it, because that movie is fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it vastly uh, exceeded my expectations for what, I, for what I thought that movie was going to be. It really did. Judging from the lock, this might be the last door to open. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh when you figure out what's behind this door. It is not at all what you were thinking. But yeah, dude, the movie was really good. Like, the, the action scenes were awesome. Like, there's, there's uh, no spoiler. Um, there's this one scene in a church where I haven't seen a fight scene that like over the top and awesome since probably the courtyard scene in Matrix Reloaded where Neo takes on like a hundred Smiths like it was that good I, I thought it was uh, it was legit and then uh, like the special effects were really tight and even though there were some some holes in the plot and some weird stuff in there, like generally, I really liked the story of the movie. Like, it was it was really good, and like there was some comedy in there and some serious stuff, and it was really fucking cool. And no spoiler, but at the end of the movie, this doesn't give anything away really. <laughs> the movie ends in probably one of the weirdest ways I've seen a movie end in a long time. But the movie ends with the main character essentially walking into the prison cell of the Princess of Sweden, I think it was, with a bottle of champagne, and he walks in there, and he pretty much gets to rail her in the ass. He's gonna put his Rod Strickland right into her Cinnabon there, and, like, she totally was down with that. Like, that was, like, there's, like, a dialogue piece before that, but he walks in there, and, like, the camera pans down, and it's just, like, her naked ass just right there, and possibly more, but it kind of flashed it really quickly, but I'm just like, holy shit. Like, the, like the eight or nine people that were in the theater were all like, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute, this is getting crazy. And then it panned away from that, but, yeah, dude, that was a really weird way to end a movie, but I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and be upset about it, because... You know, a butt is a butt, you know, and it was a pretty good one, so what do you do? We're getting distracted really off, off, you know, right now, but go see it. Just go see it. That's, that's the whole point. So, here we are at the East Corridor door, essentially, and we got one of these little things where you twist the little, the little steering wheel, Mercedes-Benz emblem knob, and then uh, you can open the door. You gotta have the right combo. So, in order to do it, just... Totally avoid this one right here. It's not going to get you anywhere. So, as long as you know that, and you know the rest of the combo, I suppose, then uh, you will get it, and you will get to find out what's behind this door. <laughs> what a practical joker. <laughs> no, I know, right? Like, first of all, why would you have a door with such an intricate lock for a laundry room? Like, unless this is Walter White's massive pile you know, stash of meth in here. You do not need to have a safe, like a, a safe to a door like this. Especially one that thick. Like, what the hell's in here? Like, a washing machine and, like, sticks of dynamite or what? And then there's Duncan W. Adams. I only like to use non-branded detergent because I'm rich. Mm -hmm. All right, so up to the loft we go. This is this is where and this is where we got a couple of safes to work with today. So we're gonna go deal with this one first. And this is uh, this is actually where we get to put that lever into use. Otherwise, we're not going anywhere with this. So this is a particularly interesting little puzzle. It, it's it's all predicated off of chess moves, actually. So what you have to do, I, I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. You have to 
you have to form six queen moves that would be un uncheckable, or you can't get like a checkmate out of it. So I think, I think it goes. Uh, I'm trying to remember how this goes. Um, fuck, I don't remember how this goes. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I think it is this one. This uh, one. The sunken boxes seem to follow a pattern. You are correct. They totally do. Yeah. So it is, it's it's essentially like one box per row and per column. So it's it's just a, it's it's a, it's a weird little one. That took a long time to figure out cuz I didn't really know what they were asking, but it, that's it's it's a good one. So we get another triple key that we'll be putting into I think I showed you guys what we do with those triple keys towards the end, right? We'll we'll get there. So, then that leads us over to this guy. And this is another one of those uh, little, you know, rotate the you know, rotate these things type of puzzle. So it kind of reminds me of like uh, the the game Pipe Dream for NES, where you know got like the water that goes through there, except for it doesn't put you on a timer. So yeah, dude, this one it's it is a pain, but if you if you follow everything correctly, you'll be in uh, in pretty good shape there. Got that, and I think the nice thing with this one is that it kind of gives you like the visual cue that you're doing it properly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We got this one. We got this. Now we're making a big little splash there. Yeah, now we're really getting somewhere. This is good. This is very good. Mm hmm. We're almost we're almost there. So we got this. Got that. And then Kablam! So that takes care of the loft. It was actually a very easy segment to take care of. Ha ha ha. With a little more effort, my will could be yours. Hmm. It's signed Duncan W. Adams. Well, of course. It, who else would it be signed by? I mean, he's not, nobody else is going to be signing these things. So we got this carved stone block. Now let's uh, let's go let's go uh, let's go into the violet bedroom first, and we'll go. I I don't remember whether we put a key in here or not. I think we may have. All right, so let's uh, take one of these triple keys and put it right in here. Yeah, okay, so we haven't done that yet. So this one needs two of those in order to open that door. So we'll have to go get another one. And I know just where to do it. So if we go, do you remember when I showed you the closet a while back? It was, uh, it was a couple episodes ago when we came in here. It didn't seem like there was much going on besides this thing, which was missing a big vital piece in order to be able to work. But then we got this carved stone block that'll actually fit right on in there. Yes, of course. It's a Polybius Square. Yes, it is. So in case you don't know what a Polybius Square is, essentially, you got all these numbers up here that are on that are on top of each one of these. And so pretty much what you're gonna they kind of work like coordinates essentially. So we'll take the first two here, like 34. So you go down here, you take three, and you take four, and you meet down the middle, and you got an O. And so it's kind of like a, we did one that was similar to this early, early in the game. Um, so then you just do it again, and you keep matching these up, and now you have O, N, and you can kind of see where this is going. One, five is E. So now out of the first set here, we have one. So the one is already fixed up there. And so you just keep going along with that, and you will eventually come up with this. And it's one, two, six, and then the last one is five. Bing, bing. And now we got another triple key. So we can go back into now we can go back into the violet bedroom and go open that door. And I told you there's there's a, a very very significant amount of importance with this door here. So let's go toss another one of these bad boys in there. Another door? <laughs> How many of them are there? He's such a bastard. Of course he'd have another door with the same exact thing in it. So we have two more triple keys to find, and then we are we're gonna be in good shape here. So what we have to do, and this puzzle, it's it's gonna be tricky. It really is. I I, I really this is one that I am not a big fan of because it is one of the few actually it's probably the only puzzle in this entire game that is randomly generated. So what you have to do with this. You turn this thing on, that little iron key we got from the Violet Bedroom last episode, by the way. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so here's the big thing. In order to open this safe, you have to enter 
um, a four digit code that will open this thing up. And so we'll take like a 1534 for instance, because it's my favorite sequence of numbers. So if it's green, if it's a solid green, that means that you have a number in the right place. If you have a flashing green one, that means you have the right number, but it's not in the right spot. And then red ones obviously mean you don't have it. So, so based off of that, that means that five is the second number and one is in there somewhere. The only, the only constant thing about this puzzle is I think that every one of these passwords ends in nine. I think that's the only constant that follows here. So let's try this. Let's try uh, six, five, one, nine. Aha, see, so, okay, so the nine thing is, is true. Let's try, um, by the way, you only get five tries to do it before it automatically resets. That's the hard part with this, is that you just have to mess around with it a bunch. Let's try 7519. Ah, there it is. I have never solved that puzzle that quickly. Uh, I usually get at least probably two or three resets before I ever figure it out. The nice thing to know, though, is that you always have at least the last number, because nine is always a constant final number there. It's just getting the other ones in the right order is the part that sucks. Aha, uh -huh, well spotted. That wasn't easy. Hmm, it's signed Duncan W. Adams. <laughs> I don't know why, like, whenever he does it, he always goes, hmm, it's signed Duncan W. Oh, of course it is. Did we read this one? Let's have a look at this letter. I don't know if we read hey, this one or not. Hey, kid brother. I hope you're well and still having fun making up wild combinations and mechanisms for safes. I'm afraid I'll never have your passion for those things. It must come from your taste for the unpredictable and absurd. Things are going fairly well for me. I am still looking after little Sarah, Edward's daughter. She's so adorable. We're thinking of paying you a visit next Sunday. See you Sunday, James. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. So, with that, we got this, this uh, golden chip card here. And then we also got this letter from Margaret. So let's check this out. Letter from Margaret. My dear brother Walter. This accent's going to be awful, by the way, and I'm not trying to make it good. <laughs> I'm writing to let you know how glad I am to see you are leaving the hustle and bustle of the business world and devoting yourself to a more peaceful life. Yeah, the, the, again, this is a really bad accent. We would like to point out that we did not we did not like at all the image you were portraying of our fine Scottish family. Because, again, this is a really awful thing here. I know you do not like me calling you Walter and that you prefer to keep your middle name secret, but I think it is a shame to reject one's name. Your sister, Margaret. So, it may, it may not seem like there's any sort of importance with that letter, but there's a lot more to it than you think. So, we will be dealing with that. Oh, we need to come, did not ah, did not need to come back in here. We will be dealing with that uh, shortly, actually. Um, so, what else do we have to do here? We've got that, and then this little sequence of things. Okay, you know what? This is actually going to be a pretty good place to stop because, believe it or not, my friends, there are only three more. There are only three more safes to solve in this entire game, and then we will have everything that we need to know. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stop this episode right now, and when we come back on the next installment and final installment of Let's Play Safe Cracker, we are going to do this safe right here. Uh, we're going to go see exactly what this chip card and this letter are for, and then, uh, then we're going to end up dealing with the final little things. So until then, my friends, this is your host, AMF1534, saying thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, you guys. Bye.